Uh, excuse all the mess behind me. That is insulation. We finally are going to be insulating in here soon. So I have already recorded the video once before. I am re-recording it all because my brain does 20 million rabbit trails. And I was editing the footage a couple nights ago and I was like, what I'm saying doesn't make any sense at all. And I was like, I, I got to re-record this all over again. I really have to take like detailed notes so I can really stay on track. I honestly don't know how I have any friends because how can you follow what I'm saying most of the time? Savannah is constantly, when we're having a conversation with other people, directing me back to the main point that I was trying to say. And at the moment, it frustrates me because I'm like, hello, I want to talk about this. But she can see in the eye of the person who is listening that they are not following, they are not picking up what I'm putting down because I have rambled on about something that doesn't really make sense. And, and when I watch a video that I've recorded, it is very apparent that she is right in that concern. So here I am today re-recording this so that I can actually make the points I wanted to make and not go on rabbit trails. Today I am coming to talk to you about something I see asked on a lot of the um, home setting groups I'm in. People want to know, how do they know what to start in their garden? You know, if you're, if you're new to home setting, this is your first year and you're thinking about growing your own food, it can be very overwhelming to figure out what to pick out and to even know where to begin. So that is what I want to help you with today. I would first suggest, and this is probably the most fun part, is to order a seed catalog. You can find them at like places like Tractor Supply or a bookstore, or you could just go on a website and ask and request one so like territorial seed is one they said this one um, and it's really great so just to show you you know they have all these pictures and they kind of tell you what to expect how long it takes for that to grow so on and so forth baker creek has probably the most sort of famous one and the most beautiful one they have a free one and also one that is paid the paid is like I mean, it's five or 600 pages. It has so many varieties in it. The free one is really nice as well. Either way, um, it'll just like open your mind. So, you know, my, my first tip is to get a catalog and make a dream list. Don't worry about, is it practical? Is it good to grow in your zone? We'll get to all of that in a minute. Just make a list of everything you think you would like to grow in your garden. And number two, would be to figure out your goals. Why are you starting a garden? If you're growing food just to eat fresh, you might not want 40, 40 tomato plants, but if you are really interested in canning, you might want to grow that many tomatoes because you'd be surprised at how many tomatoes it takes to make like a jar of tomato soup. So you just need to think about your goals. You probably, especially if you're in a home setting, want to do both. It's never necessarily a bad thing to have an abundance of, of fresh produce. You can always give to someone or figure out what to do with it. But just keep that in mind, especially if you have limited space. Which brings me to my third point is, you know, so you've got your dream list. Now you've got to figure out how much of those items on your dream list that you can grow. So you just need to kind of sit down and figure out, okay, I think I can grow about 20 plants. You don't have to do a lot of math and you don't have to overthink it because if, you, if you're going to start things from seed, you'll probably start more things than you actually end up with. There are always places to donate your extra seedlings or if you buy too many at the store, if you decide to buy starts, you'll never have trouble getting rid of those seedlings. So you just, you know, need to think that, think about that. Um, also, a great tip, if you are running limited on space, you know, if you don't have a huge backyard or you've maxed out your backyard, there is a product called uh, the Green Stock, which are vertical growing towers. They're meant for outside, and they have a couple of different versions and varieties. 
and they can grow so many things in there in, in such a limited amount of space. Um, one tip for those is you just have to water them and fertilize them a little bit more than you would tr uh, like if you were planting in a garden bed. But it, you can't beat it with the space that you save using them. Um, you can use our code, which I'll put down here. It's Hey Wanderer in all caps. That will get you $10 off of your order. And they're actually having a Valentine's Day sale, sale right now. It is February the 10th through the 15th. And it's on their leaf planter. So actually the $10 off would be in addition to that. So that's a great option if you run out of space or you just have limited space, period. The next step, which is the hardest step, is you have to narrow down your dream list. So things you should consider, what you should think about to take this big, massive list and narrow it down to what you can actually plant would be make sure you're growing food that you and your family will actually want to eat. So, you know, Savannah and I have have had a decent amount of garden space, we will experiment with things. And sometimes I wish we hadn't because you've wasted growing space, growing something that you don't like. Um, especially if you're a new gardener, I would really make sure you stick to something that you're actually going to use and eat. It can be really frustrating to struggle keeping a plant alive. If you discover you don't even like to eat it, why did you waste all that time? Also consider how much space does this particular plant take to grow versus how much product does it give you? Watermelon is a great example. It takes a lot of space to grow a watermelon or pumpkins, things like that. You may determine that you would rather use that space for something else to grow a lot more plants and you can just buy a watermelon from a local farmer or something like that. Um, they are fun to grow, but if you're, again, if you're running a limited on space, you may decide to use that space for something else. Something else to consider is your zone. Um, don't overthink the zones. However, it is important. If on your dream list is to grow citrus and you live in Maine, you may uh, need to knock that off because unless you have a heated greenhouse, citrus is just not going to do well in most northern climates. I'm even in a climate where it won't survive. I'm in 6B, I believe. And it won't survive the winters that we get here. I think 8 is really where you can start growing. Zone 8 is where you can grow low citrus. And then there are certain um, apple varieties that do better in northern climates versus southern climates and vice versa. So those are just things you need to consider. And that's all stuff that you can find in those catalogs or you can find online when you're researching. Um, zones just also determine when you can plant out your uh, seedlings or put out the seed. Also something to keep in mind is disease resistance. So there are certain varieties that are more disease resistant and pest resistant than other things. Um, like we, we have a really big problem with squash bugs and squash vine borers. And there are certain squash varieties that are less susceptible to those pests than others. You will find that kind of information out in like local gardening clubs. I highly recommend plugging in with one of those. From our old neighborhood, we were a part of a really great Facebook group and I could get a lot of really localized information. So those are, that's a great place. Also those groups, just a side note, are great for, for training plants. And if you grew, if your seeds went great and you have 20 more tomato plants than you want, you can usually swap those with something to someone who grew something that you didn't grow. So that's just a great resource as a side tip. Uh, local gardening clubs are really great. Also, consider the season that you're wanting to plant in. So, you know, it's February now. We're really looking at spring planting and summer planting. But box stores can really kind of deceive you. They will put stuff out that isn't necessarily appropriate or it's a little too soon. So just make sure 
you know, if it's the middle of summer and you see uh, a local big box store that has lettuces out, that's not really a good time to plant a lettuce, whereas it's way too early to be planting out tomatoes as well. I think most people know that, but I think I see tomatoes out way before they should be planted in the ground. I think tomatoes is one of the things that people get very eager to plant and you will end up babying them inside for a really long time. So those are just some of the tips. It's nothing earth shattering, but it just will help you kind of focus in. I'm going to be coming out with a video very soon on how I pick my tomato varieties. There are so many of them and it's kind of overwhelming when you see like the hundreds and hundreds of varieties of tomatoes to kind of how to figure out what to grow. So I'll be going through what I'm going to be growing this season that I hope I have room for um, and what made me choose those. So be looking out for that. Next week, Savannah has a video about just some of the new varieties of plants we're going to be growing. And we're going to be doing a lot more of these types of educational content. We're thinking about doing, you know, like a beginner homestead series, things to look out for, you know, things about like how to pick out the chicken breeds you want to grow or raise, I should say, how to what kind of beginner tools you should have on a homestead, things, things like that. So be looking out for that. Um, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions about kind of planning out your garden or figuring out what you're going to grow, please leave them below. I do read your comments and try to respond to everyone. Uh, we thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.